Y'all, how you doing? This is Figma for EDU Homework Hotline. So I'm going to give some folks the opportunity to join in. We just finished up a Figma for EDU monthly workshop. So if you are joining in from there, please let me know in the chat. So give me one quick moment while I get the chat going. Let me pull up my screens here. So yeah, we're this is Figma for EDU homework hotline, and we just finished the video in prototyping session. So what I'm going to be doing for the next hour or so is just answering some of the additional Q and a, um, from those that who attended the live stream. Let's get the chat going chat. Always, every time I start up these, I kind of like lose the chat. Welcome to the chat room. Let us know if you are just joining in. Hello. Like I said, this is a Figma for EDU homework hotline. This is going to be a little bit more casual than the monthly workshop. And I'm going to be talking about video in prototyping uh, today. So just waiting for a few more people. Oh, hey there. How's it going? How's it going? I'm using all caps. Let me go not all caps. How's it going? All right. So we had a few questions. I, I think that this was a good question that I'm going to pull up. Let me find a few more as well. So here we go. You must view, put the video in a frame. I'm going to talk about that one. Yeah. All right, cool. Also feel free. If you are joining, let me know if you have additional questions, just add them in the stream chat. Um, I will also, uh, be happy to add you all to the file if you want to follow along. So as I mentioned, this is a little bit more casual so I can share, let's see, I can share anybody with the link, um, can edit, um, and here we go. I can copy the link. Let me make sure I save a version for myself as well before I do that. So I'm going to go file, save to version history. I'm going to call this workshop end. And uh, I'm going to give you all access to this. Awesome. Thank you, Claudia. I really appreciate you here. I'm going to paste in this link into the chat and I'm going to pin it as well. Oh, it's not letting me pin it. Oh, that's weird. Uh, it seems that Twitch isn't letting me pin this, but you can click on that link and actually join me in this file. So this is like the after party from the workshop. I can see y'all hopping in here. Um, so feel free. Uh, if you hit the forward slash key, you can say hello. Hello. Um, so if you want to walk around and kind of see some of the things that we've done. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to answer some additional questions. I'm going to do a little bit of a recap of some of the concept that we talk about, and I'm also going to, uh, answer some of these questions. Let's just see what else we go. Is it possible to add a dissolve fade out? Yes. I'm going to answer that question. And like I said, you know, I have a question not related to videos, utilizing variables for crafting. Component. Okay. I'm seeing, Ooh, I'm seeing, I'm seeing another question here. I'm going to just copy this and paste it because we might have an opportunity to answer this one as well. So I'm going to leave this here. So this question, I'm not very good at pronouncing people's Twitch names. So I'm just going to drop this in here. So if you have additional questions, I'm going to add it here into the file. Uh, I have a few here that I'm going to begin and just start demoing. Um, boom. Uh, does this function have same GIFs? Uh, is there a way of placing a video in an online video bank? And I guess you cannot export Figma files. Yes, you can export Figma files. Okay, cool. All right. So the first thing is, uh, here, uh, just to confirm, you must put your video in a frame before adding to the page you want. Uh, so as mentioned, this whole workshop was about video and prototyping, um, in Figma. And the one thing that I kept mentioning was that when you add video, it needs to be inside of a frame for it to play. So all prototypes in Figma require at least a frame. Uh, it uses the frame as its main 
sending signal to play whatever is inside of that frame. So I press the F key and I draw a frame out. Uh, as long as you're in the design panel, you can choose what you want that frame to be. So here I can choose an iPhone, iPhone 15 Pro Max. Um, I can make it like an iPhone 14, or I can choose a different device here let's say a MacBook Air. So the frame acts as the main container and it is necessary in order for a prototype to play. So here, the thing that we were using most often was a 1280 by 720 frame that's kind of like a, like a default um, 720p HD. And we were using shapes to house the videos because uh, all images in Figma um, use, uh, the shape as like a fill, right? So here, when I draw out like a rectangle, when I draw out an ellipse, when I draw out a star, these are all objects. I mean, they're essentially vector objects, right? So they have these nodes and all video R happen to be fills on those nodes. So if I have video already in my file, I can copy those properties of that video and apply that to another shape. So here I am, I'm selecting this dog. Um, I can come over here to its fill. I can select just to the left of it, uh, hit command C, control C if you're on windows and I can paste it there. So what I'm doing here is I'm pasting that fill. And so regardless of how the object is set, it's going to do whatever it needs to do to play to that. So, um, I can also place videos a number of other different ways. I can go here, file, place image video. This is going to pull up the, um, just like a way for me to like uh, pick the files from my file browser and I can then place them uh, individually there. Now this fill as well can be adjusted in the fill menu. So I can choose between a fill, a fit, or a crop. And here I can determine, you know, how I want that fill to map to that shape. And that's gonna come in really handy if you're making things like a video avatar. So here we go, we have these three objects. And once again, I mentioned that in order for a video to play, it must be MOV, MP4, or WebM, you have to have a paid team or a free education team. So because this is a Figma for EDU workshop, we're using education teams and it must be inside of a project on one of those teams. So right now I happen to have this published monthly demos team, right? So this is where all of my demos are and that happens to be where the file resides and that's gonna give me the ability to upload videos. So here we go, I have all of these three. I'm gonna select this frame, press shift spacebar, and you can see that they now play. Now, something that I didn't show in my workshop today, um, so something I didn't show. Ooh, yo, what's up, Kono? How's it going? Ooh, I love your icon. I love the little, like, you know, the like little witchy icon. It's looking great. One thing that I didn't show in my workshop today, uh, happens to be what you can do with some of these videos. So one really cool thing that you could do with video is apply effects. So here I can select this doggo. I can go over to my effects and I can choose a layer blur, right? And that'll actually blur out the doggo's layer, right? And what's cool is this can now be, let me make another one. There we go. We'll make that smaller and we're going to remove the layer blur. There we go. So now when I play this, uh, I'm going to press shift space bar. Um, it's now playing and it's playing the blurred video behind the like real video. Um, that's kind of like the power of using video in Figma is that you have a lot of control. It behaves the same way that the images behave. All right, let's head on over back to the Q&A. Uh, so can you play one single video in three different objects as if those three objects behave like one? So this anonymous attendee asked a pretty interesting question and it allows me the opportunity to build something kind of interesting here. I'm gonna head back on over. Let's just kind of like head down uh, over here to the right. I'm gonna make this whole page gray. Uh, so I'm gonna bring this up. So can you play a single video in three different objects? So let's do a couple different things here. Let's set up a frame. This is going to be the frame that we're actually going to play, right? So this is my iPhone 14, 15 frame. But what we're going to do 
is create an interactive component that is going to transition two different videos um, so that way it plays as if they are a single object on one frame. So let's call this our iPhone. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create these like little mini frames. So I'm going to have frame one. Uh, I'm just going to call this, you know, one. Let's just do one. There we go. One. I'm going to hit command D. I duplicated it. There's two. Command D. I duplicated it. There's three. And we're going to make this, uh, we're going to have three different videos in there. I'm going to draw out a uh, rectangle. And this is going to be like our first fill or here. Let's even better yet. Let's put them up here so you can see how this whole process works. So uh, I'm going to populate these with three videos. So command shift K or control shift K if you're on windows, select that first one, hold on the option key, select the second one and hold on the option key, select the third. So I have three videos that I'm going to populate in this page. So click or drag to place. Let's click one, two, three. We got the Corgi. We got the Sheba. We got the, you know, Know, the adorable what is that a Boston I think a little Boston or like a little yeah it's adorable is what it is so I'm gonna bring this one into the first frame we should also make sure that they have unique names so rectangle one rectangle two rectangle three let's call this Corgi you know let's call this one you know Sheba and let's call this one exactly what it is adorable there you go so now I can populate them into the frames. You see that they're inside of the frame. Let's move this over here. Boom, just dragging, snapping right inside of the frame. That's what we want to do. So we have those three. So we're going to make this into one single interactive component. And the way that that's going to work is we're going to prototype this first. So um, actually, wait, let's make it into a component first. Let's select them all, come up here to the four diamonds, and we're going to create a component set. Now that it's a component set, we can call this our, you know, puppy media, right? Puppy gallery, right? And we're going to auto transition from one to the next one. So, and just so y'all know, I haven't necessarily tried this interaction per se, but I'm pretty sure it's going to work. So I selected the Corgi and I'm going to drag an interaction from the Corgi to the Sheba. And from the Corgi to the Sheba, we're going to say when the video ends, right? So it's going to play that first video. It's going to navigate to the second one. So when the video ends, we're going to change to, uh, we're going to go to that second one, right? We're going to smart animate it. Uh, and we're going to do, let's do a, uh, a simple custom Bezier and ease in out. If you followed my live stream before, you know, I love a good ease in out. So when video ends, it's going to navigate to that second one. We're golden, right? And same thing here. I'm going to select that video drag here. When video ends, we're going to animate to that third one. And same thing, we're going to select that video. And when it ends, it's going to navigate back to that first one. So it's going to change back to boom, voila. Hopefully this works. I'm going to go back to my design panel. I'm going to select that first frame. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to put it inside of the iPhone layout. And here, I'm even going to round out those corners. Let's round out those corners and see how it looks. Okay. So when I play this iPhone, I think that Corgi animation is like 13 seconds. So I apologize. We have to wait for the Corgi. So the Corgi is looking adorable, looking the other way. We got the person doing yoga next to it. It's playing. When that video ends, it should transition to the next video. Let's see. Are you done? Oh, there we go. So it transitions to the next video. There's a little bit of a pause uh, in that delay, but not looking so bad. Maybe we can turn off the smart animate. And then when this video ends, it should navigate to the next one as soon as it's over. So no matter how long that video end is, once it's ending, it's going to transition over. So we'll take one more look at that. Here we go. I'm going to click on that first frame. So when video ends, we're going to change to, and if we want that to be instant, or if we want it to dissolve, let's choose dissolve, right? So then that way we get a nice little fade between them. So there we go. Right. And same thing here. And, uh, you know, if you want to, you can move this down so you can see, you know, that little arrow going back to that first one. Voila. So we got one, two, three, when the video ends, let's watch this one more time for good measure. So we got the Corgi. He's like, yo, pay attention to me. I'm doing yoga. Very aesthetic, you know, setup that Corgi has there. Right. And then we should see if 
phase. Yep, there we go. It fa transitioned. Now the transition was a little bit hard. So one thing that I might recommend is maybe you can choose a different time point uh, before it transitions because it did have like a little bit of a flicker. Maybe that's something that you might request from the Figma prototyping team to uh, update. But I believe anonymous attendee that I have answered your question. So I'm going to move on. Let's head on over. Let's see another question. So someone asked, is this function the same for GIFs as well? Um, so prototyping with video is going to be a little bit different than GIFs. When you drop in a GIF, it just behaves like an image. So if I was to draw in a frame and I grab a GIF, I have a little ghost spoopy GIF. There we go. I got a little ghost GIF that I drop in there, right? The things that do behave the same is that the GIF itself um, will play right? Um, and so you can see me playing the GIF right here. Um, and the GIF will just continue to loop. There won't be any transition between the frames. So when I play the video, or when I play the prototype, you'll see the GIF play but you won't have the same controls like with video. You're not going to have play pause. You're not going to be able to have jump in time. So GIFs are going to behave differently in Figma than if you were to play videos. However, there are no restrictions on GIF in the same way that there are with video. Cool. So that was a great question. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Can you set the time for forward and backward buttons? You can set the time for whatever you want. So somebody was asking this question earlier. We have in this file that I was working on. I could see, I can see you follow me around. Um, if you need to, if you want to follow me, you can just click on the Figma for EDU up here. So Claudia, if you're looking for me, you can just click up there and uh, I can just spotlight myself and that'll give you the ability to see exactly where I am at anywhere in this file. So earlier we were creating this, right? And basically it's on the principle that you can have uh, object events that trigger video within the same frame. Now what that means is that you have these buttons, these are buttons that are brought into the canvas. And this file is over here. We have some of these icons that can be used. And what that allows you to do is set triggers and control video. So the person was asking, can I set video time with the forward and backward buttons? And I absolutely can. So here I can create an interaction between this icon. This icon is just vector graphics in a frame, right? I can make it be whatever I want. So here I can set on click and it says play pause. But instead of play pause, what I can do is I can say set to a specific time. So instead of uh, setting this video like five, like, you know, two seconds a little bit further, I could say, okay, let's set this to two, right? And so now whenever I play this video and I click, it's always going to set it back to, uh, to two. Right, so there we go. It's always going back to two. When I click on it, two, 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 two. All right, that's kind of funny. That looks cool. Let me make that a little bit bigger. Boop, 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 boop. Right, so it's always going to two. So yes, you can have these interactions do whatever you want them to do. And the main interactions that you can have, <clears throat> that you can have with a button uh, within the same frame as a video object are going to be play, pause video, mute, unmute video, set to specific time and jump forward and backwards. Now the jump forward and backward right here, um, it's a relative option. So it's always going to jump forward by one second or jump backward by one second. So with that, you can't set a specific time. All right, let's see what else we have here. So normally you can only have one interaction of the same type, only one click hover, but targeting videos changes this rule. Um, yes. So yeah, targeting videos with objects in the same frame will give you the ability to uh, have multiple interactions. Now that also brings us back to the second concept that we covered here with interactive components. So interactive components, and I can probably elaborate on this much more here, is going to give you the opportunity to have interactions that affect this component here, right? So it's playing, it's paused, it's playing, it's paused, right? Um, that affect both the video and the component itself. All right, cool. Um, so 
I will walk through that concept once more, exactly how that works. So let's say if I wanted to make my own play pause button from scratch, what I'm going to do is let's say I come down here, I'm going to draw two frames. So I'm going to decide how big I want that button to be. I'm going to choose, let's say 80 pixels by 80 pixels. I'm going to call this my play button and here's my play button. I'm going to hide the fill because I don't want to fill. Um, but also you might say, Hey, Miggy, I can't see the frame outlines. I'll show you how to see the frame outlines. Press command P or control P on your computer. And I'm going to type in show frame outlines. Now I can see the outline of my frame. That's going to be great. So we have our play button and then I'm going to have our pause button. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an icon for each, and then we're going to convert this into an interactive component. So here for the play button, I'm going to pick a shape. I'm going to come up here to the top right. I'm going to choose the polygon tool. The polygon tool is pretty rad in that it allows me to easily make a play button. As I'm drawing it, you might notice that it has a little bit of additional space to the left of it after I rotate it. And that's going to help you center the play button to be more like an official UI play button. So here we go. I'm going to just increase its size. Uh, right now, I'm going to make this, let's say, 64 by 64 in that space. And uh, let's center that out. There we go. So I have my play button. And I can come up here and choose a corner radius to corner radius it out. Uh, I'm going to say two. And you see we got those nice little rounded corners. For those of you just joining in the chat, feel free to uh, follow in this file. I'm going to paste a link. There we go. Unfortunately, Twitch is not letting me pin it. Will you let me pin it? Ah, cool. Sweet. Let me pin it. So you can now join this file if you have a Figma account. And there we go. So we have the play button. It's there. Let's make it white. And now let's generate a pause button. So here too, if I want to see like a bit of a layout grid. So when I'm making it, we can see what that looks like. I got a little bit of a layout grid here. I'm going to draw two rectangles. Let's say, ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom. Let's make that there. So let's make a pause button right about yaw. And right about there. And we can center that out. And uh, if I hold down the option key, I know that this was a big hit last time. You can horizontally adjust anything into the frame. So this is with, oh, it's 13. I don't want it to be 13. Let's make that, let's say 10. Or I could even make it 12. Let's do 12 and 12. These are chunky icons. And that play, that pause is like a little bit too far. Let's bring it a little bit closer and let's just censor it. And I'm going to round out those corners by value of two. So we have our pause button. We have our play button, right? And now what we're going to do is, uh, let me just hide that grid. I no longer need it. Uh, I'm going to create an interaction between the two. So now my prototype, I can basically select this whole frame and choose on click we navigate to that second frame. Right now, I'm just going to use a dissolve. That means it's going to crossfade into the next one. If you want to create more custom animations, that's totally doable with Smart Animate. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I am just going to use dissolve. And let's have that go by pretty quick. Let's say about 250 milliseconds. There we go. So now I can do the same with the pause button, just moving back in interaction. So on click, we're going to navigate back. So we have this play out. I can select both of those frames, I can come up here to the component creation tool and create what is known as a component set. So what that did, and if you can't see it because the purple is a little bit, yeah, I can change that color. Let's make that uh, uh, like a light blue. So this is our component set. It's comprised of these two frames. Both of them have interactions. And now what's cool about this is that if I go back to my design panel, I can copy that first one and <clears throat> I could paste it here. And I could actually paste a whole bunch of these. And what's cool about that is when I am playing this, let's see, let's hit that preview one more time. There we go. Um, I can, you know, kind of control these all. So, you know, they all kind of retain their own state, right? Now, 
Let's delete that. Let's delete this. This is a video layer. So here you can see that it has a video fill. Uh, I can even modify the arc tool and kind of play with that there. That's kind of cool. Uh, let's move that back and all the way around. And voila, there we go. So we have our video and I'm now gonna copy, let's copy the pause button first. So I'm gonna play, place this pause button here. There's the pause button. And in my prototype view, when I go over to prototype, shift E swaps between the two, uh, I can now create an interaction. So you'll notice in the interaction panel over here in the top right, under prototype, you'll see that there's a variant interaction that toggles the on and off state between the play and pause, but then we're also going to have a on click that we play pause and we're targeting the video that sits in the same frame as our buttons. And we're gonna set it to toggle. And that means that the first time you click it, it's gonna pause it. Second time you click it, it's gonna play it. So let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna hit play. It's playing the video, video looks great. Let's hit pause, pause the video. And you see that our toggle, our interactive component here reflects that. When I click play, it's playing, the doggy's going. I can hit pause and it'll do that as well. So we can hit the play and the pause and the play and the pause. So yes, you will be able to watch this video. I'm gonna be sharing this on my uh, personal YouTube channel. Um, uh, if you registered for the live stream earlier, you will be getting a copy of that as well. So this is just kind of like a more casual after party, just kind of answering some additional questions that folks may have. So pause, play. So yeah, so this is an interactive component and this is how interactive components can be used in conjunction uh, with the uh, video frames uh, or, or video layers that you have on a frame. And that's how that's going to work there. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that question. All right. So let's head back on over. Let's see what other kinds of questions do we have um, here. I'm going to do, 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 do. Okay. I'm just going to. All right, I'm just following like some of the questions that were asked in uh, uh, Italian. So I follow the University path because I was coming from a three-year degree in fine arts and I wanted to delve deeper into the psychological field in which my opinion is not highly considered in online courses, but this is also due. All right, so I just see y'all just having conversations about your 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 field, uh, like in kind of getting into UX. That's awesome. All right, so let's head on to another question. Let's see who else we have here. Uh, okay. We answered that one. We answered that one. Is there a way of placing a video from an online video bank? Um, I think like when you place videos, they have to be from like your local computer. You can't place it from an online bank. Uh, thanks so much, but not what I was asking. Sorry. What I want to know is one, two, three, same video playing as if it was a mask in Photoshop. Oh yeah. 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 I could totally answer that question. That's easy. All right, cool. So I'm going to draw a frame. Um, and let's say I have my video, right? So I'm going to draw a rectangle. Uh, I'm going to place some video in there and let's see what this video is. Okay. So we got a little doggy there. Now we can mask the video. Right. So what I can do is draw one, two, three. Right. So I got these uh, these shapes. So I have one, two, three shapes. Thank you for this, by the way. This is awesome. I'm so glad that you asked this in this way. So here we go. I got these three shapes and um, let's let's arrange them so they're all like nice and stuff. And, you know, we can make them a little bit bigger. Let's let's say, OK, right there right there. And you, you want them to be kind of like non-contiguous. So uh, what I'm going to do with all three of them uh, is I'm going to come up here and Boolean these objects. I'm going to use the union selection. So now you'll see over here on the left, this is like a union. Um, and I'm going to make this into a mask. So here I'm going to select this fill. I'm going to make it green. You don't have to make it green. I just like making my masks green so I can like better identify them. So here, uh, I know, seriously, you can help me learn Italian and, and y'all can learn UX. I know a bit of Spanish. So sometimes, you know, me and my barber, my barber talks to me in Italian and, and like, you know, like I'll be in Spanish, like, see, see, ya lo sé. you know, I'll talk in Spanish with him and we act like we know what each other's saying. So here we go. I'm going to take this mask. I'm going to move this down. And uh, I'm going to select both of those objects, right? So we got the rectangle, uh, which is our video. This is our doggy video. 
So I'm over here in the layers panel. So let's say this is my doggy video. There's my doggy video. I'm going to select both of them. I'm going to put them into a group. So group one. So I'm just going to call this my, my dog mask group. And the reason it's important to have this as a group is this makes your life a little bit easier. So now I'm going to right click and say uses mask. Oops, I clicked on the wrong thing. Uh, on the mask, I'm going to say uses mask. So this should mask this out. Let me make sure that this is not uses a mask. There we go. Okay, I'll show you that once again because I realize this might be a little bit difficult to follow. But this mask is masking out the video. And so that way when I play it, right? You can see that these shapes are kind of like behind it. So, um, however, you know, I move that mask, I can move this mask up, right? And now when I play it, uh, the video will play, uh, behind that mask, right? That's pretty cool. And actually this gives me, uh, uh, a really cool idea. I'm going to show y'all something cool that, uh, I probably haven't even shown anybody before. But uh, so anybody who's on here, you're on to some, you're, you're in for a little bit of a treat. Uh, I'll walk you through this mask tutorial once more. Then I'm going to show you how to use video as a luminance mask, which is really, really freaking cool. So here, let's just center that out. There we go. All right. I'll show you how this works again. Um, so let's create a new frame, I'm gonna generate a new frame. And uh, in this new frame, let's let's make something let's make something funky, right? Like we want that three area, you know. So I have that. Let's have this, and let's have this. We'll almost make like a little bento box thing, right? So I have these these different objects. Um, and so I'm gonna select them all, uh, and I'm gonna boolean them as one object. So I'm gonna come up here. And uh, right here, you'll see Boolean groups. We're going to union selection. So over here, my layers panel, you see this union. I'm going to call this a mask. This is what I want as my mask. And I like to make them green because it helps me identify them as being a mask. That's my own personal preference. Uh, we could even round out these corners if we wanted to look cool, more bento boxy. There we go. Um, so now we're going to bring in our video. So let's say if I already have like, you know, this Corgi video, um, I'm going to bring it in as a rectangle. So I'm going to draw a rectangle, right? That's where our video is going to be. I'm going to select this Corgi video. I'm going to grab its fill. So I'm going to select to the left copy, right? And there, there's our Corgi video. And we want the mask to be underneath. And, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to select them both. We're going to make them into a group. I'm going to name that, you know, my Corgi Bento mask. Um, group, right? And, and this, the group just helps keep the mask relegated to whatever's between the mask and the top of the group. So if I right click here and say uses mask, right now, the Corgi is kind of in there. Now, if I had something else that I wanted to add to this as well, I can grab this doggy video that I have over here and uh, I can paste it in here and you'll see that it's in the same group and it's affected by the same mask. So I can add multiple objects in here to be masked out by this mask, right? So uh, when I hit play, right, the Corgi is playing and it, the mask is kind of cutting it out and uh, here as well. All right, cool. So does that, does that answer your, your question? Does that help? Um, next, I'm going to show you something really cool. Um, so the next thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to grab, uh, from this videos you can use on your own file. I'm going to grab this black and white video and I'm going to bring it back to where we are in this homework hotline file. I'm going to draw out another frame and I'm going to bring this in here, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the black and white values that is inside of this video. Right? I'm going to use those black and white values as a mask, right? So whatever is going to be black is going to be hidden. Whatever is white is going to be visible. Uh, and I'll show you how that works. So let's say that I have a photo or something. Uh, let me see if I have a photo on my computer. I have my manager and his cat. There we go. So I have a photo of Tom Lowry and his adorable cat. So uh, I'm going to put that video here and I'm going to use this video as a mask. I'm going to say use as mask. Now that I've used this video as a mask, I'm going to come over here to the right where it says mask panel and it says alpha. 
but instead I'm going to choose luminance, right? So you can see what's going on here. I'm using this as luminance. So what it's doing is kind of like hiding out whatever was black is, is, uh, uh, visible or whatever is white is visible and whatever black is kind of like invisible. So even here, if I, if I move this around, um, when I play this video, you can see that it's playing the video. Um, and so like, let's say if I had other things behind it. So let's say if I had like, you know, this like red color thing, right. And it's in the frame. Oops. I'll put it into the frame. Oh, this is why we use mask groups. Let me make sure that this isn't a group. All right. And here we go. So I have this, this ellipse. I'm going to send it to the back and you can see that the ellipse is kind of like behind the video. Um, so it's cool is that it's kind of masking out everything. I'm trying to see, think of if I could find something a little bit more interesting. Like if you have like an abstract, let's say, uh, abstract, uh, black and white. So I'm on pixels, find a video. Here we go. So I have this cool video of like ink coming down so I can download this. Uh, let's, let's pull it up and, and bring it into this file here. It's kind of big. Uh, let's right click and frame that selection. And in this frame, you could see that we have this and let's once again, grab the, uh, uh file, the, the picture of Tom and his cat, cause that's adorable. I'm going to select both of those objects. I'm going to group them. So let's group them and I'm going to set the object that's in the background as the mask. So I'm going to say uses mask, right? Um, and I might, I think I actually might want to like reverse it out. Uh, otherwise it's probably not going to be as interesting, but like, let's see how this goes. So, um, here I'm going to use this as a mask and I'm going to choose a, a luminance. Um, so here, let's see how that looks. There we go. So now it's, it's kind of masking out Tom's video, uh, whatever the background is. So if like my background's red, um, you'll see that it's like now masking it out. So I'm using the, the black and white values of the, uh, the video to kind of like do this really fun effect of, uh, kind of masking out the video. So like if there's, if there's something else behind him, so let's say if I grab the, um, the Corgi video, right. And I put the Corgi video behind Tom. Um, you'll see that when I play this, right, the Corgi video is playing behind Tom <laughs> as the like black and white video is, is playing. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there might be practical applications for this, but, uh, in the meantime, it's just, you know, it's a, it's, it's a fun concept to play around with here. So once again, this is the Corgi video. Uh, this is the abstract mask video. This is, you know, Tom being adorable. And, uh, this here is just the mask group. So this is keeping all of those together. So I can hit that play one more time. And you can see that the like Corgi video is behind Tom as, as that's kind of like masking out. So there's, there's some fun opportunities that you can do there, especially if you work with video and are uh, capable in producing like a, a luminance mask, uh, that is moving. But yeah, this, this is the stuff that nightmares is made of, I think. All right, cool. Um, is that helpful? Uh, cool. Awesome. Ah, I love seeing it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate y'all. All right. Uh, how do you select multiple videos from your browser to add to the frames? Um, <coughs> ah, excuse me. So when you have um, multiple shapes and you want to add multiple videos, command shift K. Now, right now y'all can't see my file browser, but in my file browser, I can hit the command key control key if you're on windows, um, to select multiple files. So I'm selecting one, two, three, I'm able to then open that up 
And uh, that's how I've gotten those three files. So you can either press shift, shift will select all of the files that are next to each other. But if you control click or command click, if you're on, on Mac, uh, you can select those individual files and then kind of bring them in. I think I have two of the same dog with the, the green background. So um, yeah, sorry, you can't see it. You know, it kind of looks like this. I'll take a screenshot so you can see what it looks like for me. Um, so it looks, it looks like this, you know, what I do is I command click on each one of those, those videos. Um, and then when I press open, then Figma's like, okay, you have three of them and then you can place them as, as you see fit. Now, if I wasn't to place them in that way, and let's say I select one, two, three videos, um, I can just place them all and it'll just add them to the canvas at their original size. So right now it's, uh, it's just placing them. I believe it placed them somewhere. Um, I don't know where it placed them. Pretty sure I placed them in here. Try that one more time. Let me see. Uh, place, grab one, two. It could be that they're like already on the canvas. And I'm just going to do place all. There we go. Yeah, it added the videos and just kind of placed them uh, right onto the canvas at their original size. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Joining. I really appreciate you for, for, for being here today. Are there any other questions? Are there any br other broader Figma questions? Uh, let me see. I have a question not related to videos. Utilizing variables for crafting a component with smart animations using strings is not possible. Yeah, it is. All right. So this is, this is a little bit difficult to to explain, but um, yeah, you can use variables with smart animations. You just need to predefine um, the, uh, uh, you need to predefine it with actions, right? So uh, I don't know if you're still on uh, Cooley Cove underscore CL, but um, basically what you can do uh, to kind of like transition things. So like with the variables, all right, cool. Awesome. Sweet. All right. So here I will show you how to do it. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make, let's do one, two, three. I'm going to make an interactive component. Um, and uh, like you want to see it definitely animating um, here. I have a, I have a previous example and I'll show you, I'll bring it into this file. Uh, so if you take a look at figma.com slash at Miggy, um, here I have this example right here, setting variables and prototypes. I'm just going to use this as like a baseline to, uh, start this and I'll add the, um, the example to our file where we're working together. All right, cool. So this is my gallery. So yeah, so this, this carousel, um, when I click right? I'm changing the variable. Um, and essentially you need to map. It's going to look for, it's going to look for, for, for existing smart animate, right? So it's looking for like, so in order for me to hack it, to have animations between all three, I'm using multiple drag interactions and each drag interaction has the smart animate. And so it looks for the current variant that you're on and it looks for the next variant that you're going to be on. And it looks to see if there's a click interaction or a drag interaction, and it's then going to perform that animation, right? So if you wanted to have like a pop-up animation, so let's say here, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so like, let's say, um, I'm just going to show you like a, like a, like an easier example. Um, so let's say I have like a, like a Boolean, right? Like an on off. Um, so here I'm going to draw out this, I'm going to set this to the back. I'm going to darken this up. So I'm going to snap like a, like a Boolean, right? So there's the on, uh, here's the off. Uh, let's have this be green. Um, let's have this be red. Uh, let's just set those to white and maybe just darken this up a little bit, okay? And so um, here I'm going to, uh, let's make a component, uh, let's make a component. I'm gonna select them both and uh, combine as variants. Does that give me an option to make them as variants? All right, let me do this a different way. Do, 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 do. I'm just gonna frame selection, frame selection, 
select them both uh, create component set. And for this um, first variant, uh, I'm gonna use the Boolean operations here just cause uh, it kind of makes a little bit more sense. So I'm gonna set the first property to true and um, the second one to false. Um, let's select the component and name this. Um, so here I'm just gonna call this switch. Um, oh, there's so many things in here. That's, that's wrong. Um, here, I'm just gonna put this in here. I'm doing this so gross. I apologize. All right, let me let me let me start that over. Let me just go back to right here. I created too many frames. Created too many things. Let me just undo. Okay, so this is frame nine, and frame nine should have ellipse three inside of it, and frame ten should have that one. Okay, now I can make a component set, and now. This can be true and this can be false. All right, cool. So we have false, true, and we can name this. Uh, I'm gonna call this switch. All right, so uh, let's make a quick prototype where this is going to drag uh, on, drag. Uh, we're gonna turn that Wait, change to boom. All right, move in. Now we're just going to smart animate. And here we're going to uh, on drag, we're going to switch and smart animate. Okay, so uh, here I'm going to select this frame and let's just see if this is working first of all. So I'll drag it. Uh, it's terrible. Let me make sure things are named right. Uh, I'm just going to call this circle and call this circle and BG and BG. Those names have to be the same in order for smart animates to work. Sorry, this is so ugly. There we go. Now we got a little switch. All right, cool. So we have our switch. Um, another thing that we could do is we could have like another object. Uh, let's just have, uh, I'm going to create two frames. So frame one, frame two. Uh, I'm going to have this be small and this be big, right? You know, this is going to be almost like pin sized and that one's going to be big and red and small or big and green, right? And small and red, right? So between those two frames, uh, let's make this a component set. Make sure that these are named the same. So that's lips three. That's lips three. Cool. That'll work. So, um, here I'm going to have a, a prototype, uh, or here in my design panel, uh, let's make sure we name these properties. So here I'm going to just give this a name. Like I'm just going to call this state and this first state is going to be false. And the second state is going to be true. Um, and this is going to work the same way as, um, uh, which we'll call it. What are those called? Like this, like the strings. There we go. So paste that here. Okay. So now we're going to use a Boolean variable to kind of like control both of these, right? So I'm going to click here. I'm going to go to, actually, I'll show you how this works in an interesting way. So here I could turn this on off and here I could turn this on off. Uh, so here I'm going to make a local variable and I'm going to create this variable and I'm going to make this a Boolean and I'm going to call this, you know, switch, right? And right now the, the switch variable is set to false. So I'm going to bind this over here, this state to switch. And I'm going to bind this state to switch, right? So now they're both aligned up. And so if I click on local variables, I could turn this on and off. Now this one has an animation. This one does not. So when I turn this on, when I drag that, oh, actually shit, it is animating. Did I animate it? Boop. It's animating. Let's see. Prototype. That's interesting. It looks like it's animating. That's, that's kind of weird that it's doing so without me telling it to. 
Uh, I actually didn't create the uh, the animation between there. I think that it's just honoring this one and applying it to that one. But um, basically, it's going to work the same way. As long as the uh, uh, interactive component, uh, it becomes difficult when you have a lot of different states because you have to make sure that there is multiple uh, interactions between each of them. So the way that uh, uh, this one works is I'm using multiple drag interactions between each of those dots, and that's what allowing all of them to, to basically animate to one another so when I play this out uh, each one of those states has an animation to another state and uh, I believe mighty bananas to Apple doesn't and that's why it's doing like a hard stop but you need to make sure that you know you are determining how you wanted to smart animate between those two objects this one working is kind of throwing me for a loop I'm surprised that that's that that's animating at all um, but once again in order for this to animate properly you got to take a look at those those properties and make sure that that works i'm here yes use that carousel try to convert the carousel to components reuse include blue buttons in a carousel and new components reuse multiple pages always appreciate you. yeah 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 um yeah yeah uh thanks for thanks for asking the the questions i really appreciate y'all um but yeah so this should work this this is interesting because i don't feel like uh this is this is working a little bit too harsh like it's not really letting me drag it so drag changing the switch to true i think because this is applying like as like a variable switch like a boolean switch like the second that it's being triggered it's just like go for it go for it go for it go for it but because they're like kind of bound like if i create an interaction between these two so if i do an on click and an on click and they both have smart animate you'll see that they're they're referred to as two-way bound so because i'm editing this one on the top um, it's also affecting the one on the bottom because they're, they're both effectively like, you know, doing the same switch. They're both bound to that variable. So they're both changing the variable. So their interactions affect one another. Uh, so I guess it's a, it's a different answer, but you know, it's, it's similar. Um, yeah, so that, that's how you would work in something like that with a, with a prototype, um, and like an interactive component is so with this one, once again, you know, this is largely just driven on state uh, name. So each of these items here are named as gallery one, gallery two, gallery three. And as such, when this is being typed, uh, I'm setting the current item as gallery one. I'm setting the current item as gallery two and I'm setting the current item as gallery three. And here in this panel, um, this object inside of here, right? It's actually kind of nested. It's set to current item. So whenever current item is, is updated, um, it's going to change that. And if there is a transition that exists between those frames, it will then animate between those frames. Cool. I have time for one more question. If anybody has one last question, this is something too, I kind of talked about in my, my last homework hotline. So appreciate you for, for bringing that up. Any last questions? Any last questions? These are some good questions. Uh, I'm glad that y'all are here. Y'all, y'all find this helpful. Should I continue doing homework hotlines? Anybody that's, that's still on? Just wondering, this is a bit of a pilot. All right. Uh, cool. Um, I think to close it out, I'm just going to uh, uh, make sure that y'all know. Um, so for those of you who attempted, attended the video in prototyping workshop today, make sure you check out the, the do more with video prototypes. Um, this is a, this is a link. Uh, this link Oh, to learn smart, proper smart animates and local variables, is there an available video? Yes. Uh, so first off, video in prototypes playground, check this out. But to answer Claudia's question, if you go to youtube.com slash Figma design, uh, actually, before I do that, uh, in the video and prototyping file, there's tons of additional examples. So there's a video player example. There's a video chapter example. There's a video complete overlay there's a kind of keyboard toggle so you can use a space bar there's a landing page example so make sure you check out all of the different examples and you can like fully play around with them and see how they work um so to answer claudia's question uh go to youtube.com figma design if you go to the playlists 
under playlists, you will find the Figma for EDU monthly workshops and study halls. So Everywhere, under man. the workshops and study halls, you'll see that I have a, a advanced prototyping workshop where I cover variables. Uh, I also have what are known as study halls. The study hall videos, I go in depth uh, on a given concept. So I have an introduction to how to use variables and uh, animation basics. Hey, so if everybody. you're, you want to learn more about um, hey. Smart Animate, um, here in the animation basics, I, I cover how Smart Animate works and how to use it from kind of like a, like a beginner standpoint. All right, cool. Um, can you send me a link to the error in the forum that you're, you're experiencing? So, uh, feel free to send it to me. Um, just that way I can check it. So feel free to send it to Miggy at Figma.com. But yeah, so like anybody who's here, feel free to check out my previous workshops. If you want to check out my previous homework hotlines, I have them somewhere else. Uh, they're here at Miggy dash from, uh, or youtube.com slash Miggy, M I G G I from, uh, F I G G I figgy. Um, so if you head over here, oh no, there's an at symbol I'm missing. There you go. So if you head over here, you can see the previous uh, homework hotline workshops. Um, let me paste that there. So you can come here. Uh, two weeks ago, I did one on homework on uh, interactive components. Uh, before that, it was kind of like a, like an intro one. Uh, I did one on Figma Design 101. Um, so feel free to check those out. There's also another one on components, I believe. I think this is the one on components. Yeah. So this was the uh, components homework hotline. So if you want to check those out as well. So I'm going to be edited out for today. Thank you all so much for asking questions and being such an amazing audience and uh, following along and asking such great questions. Uh, this was definitely a fun one. I know it's very technical in some of the concepts that we're getting into. So if you are new to Figma, feel free to reach out to me. I'm, all, I'm uh, at Miggy on uh, Twitter. Love to know if you're studying, if you're a student, if you're an educator. Um, and you could always and ask me questions at Miggy at figma.com. I really appreciate y'all. Yeah. Good night. Good day. Good morning. I know y'all co coming from across the world. So, uh, let me know too, of this, this Twitch, uh, uh, format is helpful. I'm trying to expand and, and try different venues for, for some of this, this content. Ciao. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I hope y'all have a wonderful day.